is my home. Just a little bit of time, though, baby. And the world keeps growing stronger. No, you never replace this island, Kawhi. It's where I belong, yeah. Just a little bit of time, though, baby. Got you surfing much longer, baby. Once you leave, you know you'll always come back. Kawhi is where we are from. Whoa, oh. Welcome to the Outer Island Podcast brought to you by Tomba Surf Co. Kauai. We're excited to have with us today one of the most entertaining surfers in the world. He is a two-time world junior champion, a Red Bull Airborne champion, surfed in the Pipe Masters at 19 years old. He's been on the world tour since 2016. His partner has won the Surfer Pull Awards two years in a row. And both years, he finished second. (laughs) Now living on Kauai, raising a little ankle boy (laughs) with his wonderful partner, mentored by Joe Parco, who's been coned more times than a Dairy Queen delight. (laughs) Welcome to the podcast, Jack Freakin' Uh, Freestone. (laughs) Thank you so much, John. I appreciate that. What an intro. (laughs) I've seen that on all your podcasts. You've got a good intro. Oh, thank you very much. Um, can you give us an update on what you've been doing during this crazy time and how mm. your family's doing in Australia? Yeah, man. Uh, so what we've been doing here, not much as of right now. Not not really any any surfing because <laughs> somewhere over here it feels like someone flicks the switch and the waves go away. So um, it's just been a lot of family time, man. Just watching my son grow up, being with Alana and Banks and training a lot doing a lot of jiu-jitsu yeah um probably too much (laughs) but uh i gotta do something just to keep myself sane and and also everyone back in australia my family everyone's safe man everyone everyone's good over there oh that's awesome thank you bro hey well training really never hurts you (laughs) yeah that's always keeps you busy that's a good thing yeah exactly man oh banks is growing up so fast He's looking, Tell me about it, man. <laughs> he's looking solid already. <laughs> uh, are you teaching him some Australian? No, nah. He, he's definitely, um, he has an American accent. Uh, I'm not trying to enforce anything. He's just, he just is who he is. And I'm happy with, if he's happy, that's basically it. It'd be so classic if he was like walking around using <laughs> catchphrases. He's like, got, he's got <laughs> like, a, he says a few things. I think he just copies me. He doesn't even know what they are, but uh-huh. and they're Australian words. But um, yeah, ninety percent of his uh, vocabulary is is American. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my mom is from Bali, so we always have these Indo parties with all the Indos on Kauai, and pretty much what it is is we just grind into food make carvings and fix our motorbikes that's so cool <laughs> that's awesome man and then so are you hooking up with all the aussies over here and making some dog's eye and <laughs> around in your budgie smugglers <laughs> no man I, i'm not really um geez it's been hard because we're in the middle of this pandemic so it's everyone's just kind of um distancing themselves so no we're just hanging out as a little family unit that's basically it (laughs) (laughs) but i wish i wish yeah guys running around in your speedos everywhere (laughs) we don't run around in speedos we don't run around i think that's more brazilian yeah yeah (laughs) can you tell us what um i'm like growing up around like the southern points around snapper yeah, of course I can, man. Um, to me, it was probably a blessing because I I was born into that lifestyle over there, um, which was awesome. So I once I got to an age where I could surf independently by myself, um, I was kind of engulfed in the in the surf culture over there, which is probably some of the biggest surf culture in the world. Um, and having uh, you know, idols like Mick and Joel and Dingo and Vassa and Brano, the, the list goes on and on, and Steph Gilmore, Michael Kalupa, everyone. Um, almost felt like, okay, yeah, like my path's already set to be a surfer. So I've been incredibly blessed to, to be born where I was. Yeah, your dad was a pro footy player. Yeah, he was, yeah. Was there any chance that maybe that was going to happen? Um, there was. There was a big chance. I had a, when I, I think I was 
12 years old, I already had a, a football scholarship set up. Um, I was to go to, uh, I can't remember, it's a school in Brisbane, which is about an hour and a bit north of where I live, you know, on, on the Gold Coast. And uh, I was to play football and rugby union. And then right at that time was when I was starting to get into surfing. And I love surfing so much more. As soon as I started surfing, I was like, I'm hooked. Screw football. <laughs> football gives you injuries. Surfing's the best. I'm sticking with surfing. <laughs> yeah, and you probably the best feeling ever in surfing, winning a contest, getting barreled. Just Yeah. I mean, winning contests is a definitely a cool aspect of it, but... I mean, just even surfing. Yeah. It's just yeah, surfing just cool itself is cool. Yeah. Glide on the water. Yeah. Um, I saw you got some of that, or some Cura, some good Cura, like a couple months ago. How was that? Ah, uh, yeah. So we went home. We usually stay over here in January, um, try and get some of the winter swells over here, and then shoot back over to Australia so for the Corona Pro. Pro. Um, and... Yeah, we, we got, the day we got in, there was a really good swell, but I was so jet lagged, I couldn't even surf. Uh-huh. Yeah, flying with a two-year-old on a plane isn't isn't that easy when you go <laughs> fly 10 hours. And then straight into a really big swell. Yeah, I, I couldn't even see straight. <laughs> and it was only a one-day swell, but we got some really fun waves when we were back in Australia, and then all this stuff happened, and we flew back here. Oh, the old school Aussie guys are legendary. Um, <laughs> who are the people you looked up to and who did you fear? Was there anybody that you feared? Man, I didn't fear anyone. Um, there's no reason to fear anyone. Everyone was so nice. Um, I mean, there's a lot of, we used to call it grommet abuse, but I feel like that's pretty natural in, in our culture. Um, just playful stuff. And then, uh, yeah, so we didn't fear anyone, but I looked up to almost everyone. Um, I mean, the list goes, like I was saying before, the list goes on. It goes from, you know, Wayne Dean, Daryl Parkinson, Joel Parkinson, Mick Fanning, Dingo, Steph Gilmore, Mark Ocalupo. I mean, the list just goes on and on. Yeah, because um, I heard a story that Joel, um, Joel told a story of him getting taped upside down naked yeah. inside of a um, store window. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that used to happen when we were. I feel like the grommet, uh, the grommet abuse has definitely um, has stopped. But yeah, that that kind of stuff. We used to get put in bins, and people used to sit on the lids, and we used to. <laughs> yeah, it was horrible. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff like that. Like we'd get taped to duck, we'd get ta- duct taped to poles, and uh, getting pantsed a lot in front of in front of girls. I mean, the list goes on. It was horrible. It's incredibly funny, but horrible. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. Now that Mick and Joel are on holiday, um, can you share some <laughs> classic stories um, growing up with them and yep. how they were on tour? Yeah, that's a good word for retirement on holidays. Um, I mean, this, the only stories I've really got of Mick and Joel is like traveling and competing with them, um, which actually is <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um the funniest story I have with Joel, and I don't want to remind him, is we have a slap bet. I'm still, I think he still owes me one slap, which is stupid for me even saying, but we had a bet when we were in New Zealand once doing a, a trip for Billabong. Uh, it was a basketball. It was when Golden State were versing uh, Cleveland Cavaliers, and we we bet three three slaps, like slap, like yeah. slap someone in the face whenever. <laughs> Whenever you want, you just get to randomly just slap that person in the face, and they can't do anything about it. <laughs> and I think it was the year that Golden State Warriors. I don't know if you know anything about basketball. Oh no! But it was really. like Golden State. Yeah, Golden State Warriors. They're like unbeatable, and then they lost to Cleveland Cavaliers, which is a huge shock. And I bet for Cleveland to, um, for Golden State to win. So Joel won, and he first slapped me when we were on the beach doing a photo shoot and it almost knocked me out. <laughs> yeah, it was really, it was, the, everyone thought we were fighting, but cause I don't <laughs> think anyone else really knew the, the bet. So everyone was like freaked out. And then the second time we were in Tahiti and uh, 
it was after the contest was finished and we we went to stay like at the airport hotel and we we're having a few drinks and like the whole wsl goes there before their flights so everyone was there and just randomly at the bar i was ordering drinks and i turned around and he just went whoa and slapped me in the face and again <laughs> almost knocked me out and all the wsl officials were there and like thought we were fighting <laughs> And just it, slap you and that's it you slap, and yeah <laughs> like a heavy slap those kind of slaps that almost knock you out Holy crap. Um, and i just had to wear it and uh, yeah i had to tell all the we had to tell everyone we were just joking um but he still owes me one more which is suicidal to say because i, I feel like randomly i'm just going to be paddling behind the rock and boom <laughs> again um but that's my joel story I actually got a few gel stories, but uh, Mick's story, Mick took me to um, Pea Pass. Gosh, that was one of the coolest surf places I've ever been. Coolest surf trips I've ever been to because I got to go with Mick. And that was like when he was like in the middle of winning world titles. Like he was just a god in Australia. Still is, still is a god. Um, and he took me to Pea Pass, like... In Guam, which is oh man, it's a, it's like the most incredible wave. And we got there, and there was heaps of people there, and um, it, it a pretty big swell ended up hitting, and um, I can remember the whole lineup just cleared because they didn't want to deal with it because it was pretty big, and it was just me and him for three days. No one else came out really. How how's that wave? Oh man, you would love it. It's just like a perfect rolling barrel ride. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, it's like every wave is borderline mechanical. That's insane. Yeah. Better than a wave pool. Way better than a wave pool. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know Joel was recently asked what the best wave of his life was to date? And he said it was a right-hander over here that he was, he didn't make it, but he was getting a barrel just cone for 30 seconds. Have you scored that wave yet? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, I've scored that wave. Um, yeah, it's awesome, man. Beautiful place. Reeling down the line. Yeah. Saw so a couple of Andy's movies. Or yeah, I don't, Andy's. I, I don't really want to talk about it too much. Yeah. <laughs> don't let it go too that, public. That's it. <laughs> Was there a wave in your life that just got your cornhole tightly puckered? <laughs> No, no, I don't think so. But I love you trying all these Australian slang. Yeah, it's good, man. Oh, well, I'll have to say my cornhole um, puckered when I was out at... And you, you were paddling over a wave, and I was, like, getting ready to duck dive it. And I think I heard you say go. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, so I turned around and I, I can went, remember and that. Yeah, it was I, a massive one, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Air dropped all the way down. Yeah. Somehow made it. I yeah, I can remember that one. Yeah. I can remember it was a big one, and I was, I think I was too deep, but you were kind of in the perfect spot, and uh, I can just remember you did not hesitate one bit. Just, <laughs> I was like, whoa, that was sick. <laughs> and then I heard everyone down the end of the line just screaming, we're like so stoked. It, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have seen like a, a footage of it or something, but I heard it was yeah. nuts. It was like so scary, just like air dropping all the way down yeah. is like that wave is heavy too. That wave, especially where you took off, like it, you kind of want to backdoor it and you took off on the, like kind of the heaviest peak and you just manhandled that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um. Let's talk waves in Hawaii. Yeah. And don't worry, you can't say any names you want. I, I'll just bleep it out. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Or besides the like not so great waves over here. Uh huh. Um, have you scored like Honolulu or like Ma'alea? No. no, I haven't, man. I've, I haven't been over to um to Maui. I've never surfed it. Um, it's always been like right there, but I've always had stuff in different parts of uh, Hawaii that I can't really get to Maui. I mean, the only one time I was going to go was when Alana was in the uh -huh. contest and it was like as good as I've ever seen waves. But the day after she surfed, I had to surf at sunset. So I was like, oh, I can't, can't really fly back and forth. Yeah, I can't juggle both. That's, yeah, it was hard. Um, but other than that, no, I haven't really been anywhere else besides uh, Oahu and here. Have you surfed um, like anywhere on the Big Island, like Banyans or anything? No, nah, I haven't been there. 
No, I, I was going to come out for Sh- um, Shane's uh, Shane Dorian's contest. Uh huh. Um, but I couldn't make it because it was like just after Banks was born. Uh huh. So I couldn't get there. Yeah, I was um in a contest at Banyan's on yeah. uh, NSSA. Um, Jackson Dorian said it was an eight out of ten for Banyan's like wow. that day. Wow, that's pretty cool. I was so stoked. It was just firing that's rights awesome. and lefts mm-hmm. with some barrels here and there. How cool is that? That was so sick. It was insane, <laughs> insanely good. Yeah. Oh, when you were growing up, did you have any contests like that? Were you just like so ready to get in it? Like so yeah, ready for um, it? definitely. We had some really fun contests. It was it like we'd always know where the location is, but it would just. I feel like one out of like every like six to eight contests would be really good. Like little fun barreling waves. It was predominantly beaches, like beach breaks. Um, but I can remember we there's a wave called Corumbinelli back on the Gold Coast, um, particularly Lacey's Lane. That every time there's a contest, there, I was so excited because it just felt like every time we had waves there, it was the way I describe it. It was kind of like a fun, a poor man's J Bay. It's like super fun, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's. Oh, um, secret. Yeah. It's just maybe a little while ago, but it was like almost. It was like reeling all the way across. At secrets. Yeah. The really. First, the first beach. Wow. Like, yeah. At first beach. Yeah, and it was like maybe double overhead for me, or maybe even more. Yeah. It was just so rippable. Really. Like, yeah. Yeah. I was, um. So there's first beach, second beach, and third beach, yeah. Yeah. What's the what's the the little zone over to the left of first beach, like north? That is zeros. Zeros. Yeah. So okay. it's zero, one, two, three, four. Zero. Okay. 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 Uh, so zero, zero, one, one two, two, three. three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The first time I ever went down the secrets, I said zeros. That's uh-huh. where the bank was, and it was like a big, long running right. And it was the funnest thing ever. Like, Whoa, this place is awesome. <laughs> and then ever since then, it's never broke there. <laughs> and it's always yeah, first it's, first or third beach. It's always, like, so iffy down there, you know. Yeah. It, it was good that, like, that day I surfed it. That was probably the best I've ever surfed it. Gotcha. Yeah. And usually it's so, like, crappy and yeah. so, like, small. <laughs> yeah. I, every, I feel like every time I surf it, it's just, like, a weird little close out. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty much just like there's nothing else on the North Shore yeah. that gets a little bit of North Shore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's just the spot that you go to if you yeah. really want to surf. That's it. Um, for me, since I still don't have a sticker on my nose. Yep. <laughs> um, whenever I see like um, somebody in my heat with like a sponsor or something, it just yep. fires makes me so fired up to like go yeah bigger and harder and that's good man than anybody else in yeah. the water that's awesome man oh uh, were you ever like that i was exactly like that yeah i can remember um i can remember there was a guy called bruce lee used to work for billboard um when i was about 13 years old so i was close to your age and I can remember I just won a bunch of contests and there was um, state championships coming up. And he said, if you win that contest, I'll sponsor you. And I can remember I, I was dominating the whole final and then I lost in like the last probably three seconds. Oh, really? In that contest, yeah. And they sponsored the kid who won. Um, and... I can just remember that was the fuel to my fire because after that I, I didn't get sponsored for like another two years. I got sponsored by Ripco when I was like around 14, 15. Um, but yeah, man, I was the exact same. There was always kids showing up who had the best equipment, had stickers, best wetsuits, everything. But I guess, yeah, the same kind of yeah. fuel fire you have. Yeah, it fires you up because... Yeah. Um, I mean, I've seen you surf, man. You're incredible. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. No, no worries, man. But um, no, look who's talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've seen you do some really cool stuff that's kind of blown me away. Um, so, man, I think you hang in there, and it's only a matter of time before a sticker winds up on your board. 
That would be so sick. I'm ready for it. <laughs> yeah, I know you are. Um, you do really good at um, Karama, so you have a pretty good history there. That's where you yep. won your first junior world champion? I think. Um, yeah, I won both. I actually won both here. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you won the Red Bull Airborne, too. Yeah, last year. Yeah. So is Gosh, that like... three wins you've had there, or is there yeah. more? Um, no, I've only, I've only surfed in like four events there. So three out of four. No, I surfed five events. That's a world tour. Um, yeah, so I only surfed five events there. So got a good track record with, with uh, Karamas. I mean, it's the ultimate wave, man. It's, yeah. It's so everyone sweet. surfs good there. Yeah. I, I love that wave, just car parks and stuff. Mm-hmm. I like surfing car parks a lot. Well, I actually like surfing car parks a lot more too because it's less crowded. Yeah. And you get a lot more waves. Yeah. I was That's that's my go-to warm-up. I don't even surf Karamas. Karamas has a thousand people out every single every single session, so I always just mosey over to, to car parks and KFCs and stuff. Oh, I love how they add those, like, special events to the contest, like the Red Bull Airborne and everything. Pretty cool, Although, yeah. Although, like, the judging for air seems a little bit whack in any contest. Do you think they should have, like, a um, judge just to point out air difficulties? And, they, like, um, they do. They oh, do. they do? Yeah, yeah. Um, Shane Beshin is there. Like, he knows his stuff. Yeah. Um... And they've also got, you know, Kersey's kind of, he's kind of the head. All the judges know airs now. Yeah. I mean, it's been so many years of such crazy airs that they know how to score them. Uh-huh. And when you're just scoring individual airs, it's, I think it's a whole different ballpark to where you're like, if you're scoring like combos, if someone does an air, a snap, snap, floater, and a reverse or something, it's pretty easy to know where that's going to go, whereas if someone just does one air, it's like sometimes it's like tricky to understand how to score that. <clears throat> um, but I feel like, yeah, I mean, there was some, <laughs> I think it was because it was so new. Uh-huh. People were like, oh, we just got to figure it out. Yeah. And last year was just kind of like a testing year. And I think Kersey and um, Red Bull and the WSL did a pretty awesome job. I mean, it always brought like such a good vibe to every event that they showed up at. It was just so fun when they were around because you have all the free surfers who were with the competitors and the free surfers are just so funny. Yeah. Because they're just there partying and don't get crap. <laughs> Before we were talking about legends in Australia, yep. and it just popped up in my mind. We just recently lost a Hawaiian legend, yeah. um, Derek Ho. Yeah. And we're sending all of our warmest um, aloha to the Ho family. Um, did you ever meet or surf with him? Yeah, man. I... I, I um... I had a, a lot of encounters with Uncle Derek, man. He was such a nice guy. He was so talented in the water and he was so nice out of the water. I mean, I, I, I was on Oahu like three weeks ago and I saw him and he was just so happy and healthy. He was just walking down to go surf Rocky Less. Um, so yeah, man, it's a really strange thing to wrap your head around. And uh, yeah, death is never easy. It's never, it's never an easy concept to, to figure out. But, uh, yeah, man, it's sad. Surfing definitely lost one of its greats. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, a, it's terrible what happened. I know, man. It's yeah, life. It's, it is, man. It is a part of life. You're born into this world and, you know, you, you leave this world eventually. And the only thing you can kind of wish for in life is that you don't leave too early. Yeah, definitely. Um... Any advice for someone like me who um, is trying to pursue their dream to be a pro surfer? Yeah, yeah. Be patient, man. I've uh, like I've seen you surf. Don't don't worry about other people. Just focus on yourself. I mean, good things will come if you focus on yourself and not worry about everything else. Oh, that's really good advice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, man. I learned from personal experience. So. Oh, um, let's talk wave pools. Kelly's pool being a part of the tour, is that an event you like? Not necessarily. I feel like it's still in the early stages of kind of figuring itself out. It's it's uh, just the process around it. I love the wave itself. I've had some incredible, like, fun waves. Um, 
written there but I mean it's just the process around so it's like uh, you got to go there four days before the event and you get you get two sessions you get one right one left and then another session where you get one right one left and if you fall off that's the, the, they're your warm ups they're gone so I can remember last year I had a warm up day like three days before the event and then two days before the event and I, my, my first right and left I fell off at the takeoff I'm like oh shoot I gotta wait 24 hours till I stand up again and then the next day I fell off on the end of my rights and my left so you get two two chances to warm up before the event and then uh that's not much time at all no it's not and if you fall off your waves are gone so it's incredibly hard and then uh on top of that i was scheduled later i was, I was scheduled to surf like last of all so like in between my, my session where i fell off there's like three days where I just did not surf. You can't surf. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that, you're, just, you're just sitting there just with doing nothing. It's like they should have like your schedule. You're, you're scheduled. To, you're, yeah, your wave's going to come through at this time. That's when you're going to be in the water. And I mean, I had three days of just waiting around, and then it's like, okay, surf your wave. And I was like, oh shoot. And you should have like at least thirty minutes every day. I feel like for. It's just hard because how do you divide that up between yeah. what? <laughs> like 60 other people yeah that's the problem that is the problem man it, i mean it'd be cool if you had like a little waco wave pool right next yeah. so you could just ride waves um but yeah i mean i feel like once they figure out that solution i think it'll, it'll be a pretty sick event and talking about the other pools um do you think you're gonna do any other contests in a pool like uh, maybe the stab high or something uh i was gonna do the stab high Two years ago, last year, two years ago, um, I think the year Chipper won it. I don't know when that was. Um, I was going to do it that year, just as something different. I'm, I'm not too sure. I'd have to figure out if I'm even allowed to do it because it's not a WSL sanctioned event. So um, I would love to. I reckon surfing in wave pools is really fun. Yeah, it just looks like such a cool scene that's it that's it it's just like novelty it's just yeah. fun it's just you're just going in there to have fun yeah to me um like saying like maybe on the world tour with the wave pool event i'd rather see you guys surf like maybe mexico or like oh, cloud man. break I'd... or something something else yeah i mean i like i said the wave pool is definitely fun to surf but I, I think just the repetition just drives people crazy yeah. from everyone i've spoken to or sat down with and talked to they're like yeah we watched about one or two people surf and then we just because it's know, so repetitious it's yeah like, I, I mean and you, know, you know exactly what's going to happen yeah it's like oh this person's on a wave he's going to do a big air or something yeah like right here yeah essentially um, so the rumble at the ranch is this this weekend. Yeah. Um, did you consider going to that event? I never got an invite, but um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have gone anyway. Uh-huh. Yeah, I I was <laughs> I was kind of over it. I just didn't want to do a two week quarantine coming back. Yeah. Do you think um you're gonna watch that? <sighs> when is it on Saturday or Sunday? Sunday. I'm not too sure. There's like UFC fights coming up this weekend. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I probably, well, I, I don't know. I probably, if yeah, just because it is the ranch. I mean, yeah, I'll definitely watch. I'll probably be um, multitasking, multi-watching. Yeah, right now I have Felipe cruising to a win over there. Yeah, same. I mean, he's pretty. If Gabriel's not in there, I mean, he's yeah, he's right there. Speaking of like events, what would um what do you think about the new tour schedule and how um a world champion is going to be decided? Uh, I like it. I think it's different. I think they've kind of the WSL has definitely wanted to go this path, this direction for like a few years. They're just waiting for a time to do it. And I mean, I like it. I mean, starting the year off at pipe instead of ending the year is pretty cool. Um. I mean, yeah, I think it'll it'll make for an exciting world title finish. I mean, because I think their whole theory is they want to crown the world title in the water instead of, you know. Uh-huh. Remember how Kelly would win it in Portugal and yeah. then they'd 
or France or something and there'd just still be two other events left to surf, which is pretty boring to watch. Do you think it would be um, a little unfair to some of the people if they win like three contests or like seven contests before that and then they're like world number one and then they go to this um, last event and then they're sick or something? And Yeah, I mean, that's just a really unfortunate circumstance. Yeah. Uh, if you're winning, I think there's a huge incentive if you're winning the world title leading into the world title event. If you're leading the ratings, it means you only have to surf once. Like, where if, if you're fifth, you have to surf five times, essentially. Yeah. So, I mean, if, I mean, I, I think it's going to be fun. I think it's yeah. going to be cool. Yeah. It's going to be exciting. It's going to yeah. be really, really exciting. Yeah, gonna it's get, definitely going to be It's going to come exciting. down to, like, the two best people surfing on that day. The, the, two, the two best people throughout the whole year are going to be surfing against each other. I think that's cool. Where would you want to see that, um... Where would you want to see that event? I personally, because, okay, so I, I've i been asked this um, from a few people at WSL. Uh, uh, you got to have a full playground. Like, essentially, yeah. you have to have equal opportunity for goofy footers and for natural footers. And I was saying Lakey Peak, because Lakey Peaks, it's a split peak. It's a left, to right. Awesome. It's super entertaining. Crazy right. Awesome left. So I was just thinking, and it's good through all tides, like low tides, high tides, it works perfectly. So I said Lakey Peak. Uh-huh. That's yeah, a, that would be that's sick. One of the, that's one of the finest waves in the world. <laughs> um, do you know if there's going to be a triple crown, including pipe, this year? Mm, I think it's still tentative. I'm, I'm not too sure, man. I don't think there is. I mean, I, it's hard to see this year even starting up. Even next year, it's looking like... I mean, Australia just said that they're trying to put um, structures in place where there's no international travel to 2023. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, as far as this year is concerned, I've, I don't see it happening. There's too many people coming from too many places. Quarantine laws are too strict. Uh-huh. Alana's ripping right now, and I want to get her in here someday. Yeah, um, of course. But how would it be to have the both of you on tour surfing together on in all these great waves with banks? Along? <laughs> yeah, it, it'd be cool, man. I feel like it's kind of just natural. Like it feels like her presence is still there. I mean, she's had a few wild cards now, so I mean, whilst I've been on tour, she's had a few wild cards. So I mean, we we're always in the same environment together. We're always, you know, family at events so it's pretty cool is she trying to get back on the tour i don't think so no nah. i mean she was on tour for six to eight years I yeah think a long so. time yeah already. she she qualified when she was really young she's she's done that part i think i think she just still wants to try and compete at like fun events but she doesn't want to chase the qs anymore just let me know if you need like a designated board caddy or something <laughs> oh. Maybe even a babysitter. I That's don't care. It. No, I'll have to bring <laughs> you. I'll have to. I'll have to bring you to one of the events. <laughs> That'd be so sick. I'm proud to say we have the same longman jujitsu professor over here. That's it. Um, since since you've been training, how do you think it's helped your surfing? Um. Gosh, good question. I think for me, it's mostly been about coordination. That's my that's my experience with jiu-jitsu. Um, just kind of muscle memory and all my fast acting like muscle fibers. I feel like it's definitely helped. Like just feel so much more alert and confident with direction of movement. And yeah, man, I, I mean, I've been training jiu-jitsu, gosh, now. I think I started in 2014, 2015. So yeah, like five, six years. Around five or six years now, I've been training jiu-jitsu, so I love it, man. It's been awesome. And then come back here, and you've got Professor Bruno and uh, Professor Hunter, man. It's learning from two of the best. Yeah, what you legends and jiu-jitsu legends. Yeah, definitely. Any good stories with them yet? With with those uh, with yeah. Hunter and, and Bruno. Yeah. Um, not really. Uh, I mean, I've I've hung out with, we trained a bunch like 
at our house with Hunter a bunch um, in the gym and we've been surfing. We went down um, Nepali coast. That's pretty cool with Ryan on his boat. Um, but that's about it, man. No, pretty simple. Yeah, somebody just recently stole Stop. Ryan's foil I know. out of his I saw truck. That. Scrubs, man. <laughs> it's been happening a lot. Seabass, um, Seabass has started getting into coaching, and I think his filmer's equipment got stolen down in a knee. Oh yeah. Did you hear about that? Yeah. Um, Miles. Yeah, Miles. Yeah. Yeah, his camera. <laughs> All these camera gear, man. That yeah. sucks. It just stealing is just was such it a scumbag out of move. his car? I think it was out of his boat. So I think he had his boat stored somewhere in, in down a Hanalei, and they just took it out of his boat. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah people scumbag, are just stealing man. more and more now. I mean, it's, I just it's, keep on hearing about it. I know, man. It's just people. I mean, I, I don't know if the government's kind of switched off or, or stopped. Um, this whole um, freaking uh, what do you call it? <laughs> the job funding, like funding people for their jobs. Uh-huh. Um, unemployment. Yeah, unemployment. unemployment. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was looking for. Yeah, there's, there's. I think they've stopped, pulled a pin on this whole un- unemployment. Um, so I'm not too sure, man. Just I've heard people getting robbed over here. I've heard people like. There was, I think, at, at um, Kahili Hollow Road, I, I heard someone pulled over to help these people. It looked like they were broken down, and then they they robbed the person. Oh, my God. So, I mean, yeah, it's desperate times. It's weird yeah. times, man. The longer this lasts, especially with all these, like, if the government doesn't fund the unemployment, man, it's it's brutal. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of, like, Hawaiian surfers doing yeah. jiu-jitsu and Brazilians. But well, not too many Californians. Um, is jiu-jitsu popular in Australia? I think it's slowly becoming more popular. I think the more... I think the the bigger that the UFC does, the more eyes that are brought there. I think the, the jiu-jitsu and everything, like other factors of MMA are kind of getting exposed as well. I think jiu-jitsu is starting to be a pretty underground big sport now yeah for for sure when when banks gets older are you gonna get him in there i'll definitely get him in there i've seen um i've seen i mean i think they, all the kids look so cool like dressed in their little suits in their little geese um just running around having the best time ever so i'll definitely put him in there but whether he wants to follow that path it's up to him yeah he he's so classic <laughs> he might be so classic <laughs> That'd be sick if you keep him in there and then if he likes it, if he's enjoying it, and then later on I get to train with him and we get to train with him and stuff. That'd be that'd, so that'd sick. That'd be really cool, yeah. man. Yeah. That'd be super cool. I know. I see I see Hunter and um, and Bruno training all the time, and I'm like, whoa, those two guys are just like they're alpha dogs. I'm like, yeah. It's pretty cool that Bruno's taught Hunter almost everything uh-huh. and how good Hunter is. Have you ever been to one of the belt ceremonies yet? I've been to two now, yeah. Um, I was there when Reef got his purple. Um, so Reef is the, the son of um, of Professor Bruno Ewald. So when Reef got his purple belt, man, I was there. Got to give him a good whack on the back. <laughs> oh, Nihoa goes so hard. He does not hold back. <laughs> you look at Nihoa and he's just winding up mm-hmm. <laughs> everybody it was yeah there was some there were some hits i was like oh i was I, I do it subtle to everyone so that you know potentially if it's my turn everyone's going to be like mellow to me because <laughs> if i whack someone super hard they're going to whack me back oh it's definitely like a special moment for their family and every yeah, everybody man. when they get promoted definitely definitely yeah, just you'll you'll see it too. Their reactions to some people getting their black belt or brown belt. Yeah. Like yeah, I remember Reef getting his blue belt. Yeah. And it was a really emotional like thing for Hunter and Bruno. Yeah, yeah, that's the same when you got his purple belt, man. It was um, yeah, it's a lot of tears, tears of happiness though. Yeah, um, of course. 
And uh, yeah, man, like you said, it was incredibly emotional. It, it's cool because they're just all on the same kind of path. Yeah, I um, I asked my Kauai guests this question if they have any crazy pig or centipede stories, <laughs> but since we have an Australian in the house, yeah. I want to know if you have any good wallaby, crocky, or <laughs> shock story. I, man, I actually probably have more centipede stories than any of the uh, Australian animal stories. I mean, I've seen alligators before. Uh, when I went to Mount Isa once, they were, they were on a barge and they were following the barge because usually people throw stuff off to try and feed them and get photos, which is real silly. But um, I've seen one and they are scary. You do not want to be in the <laughs> ocean when they're huge. Just that and they're just so fast and they're just, they're, yeah, it's scary. But I, I am scared. I'm not scared to death by centipedes, but the other day we were cleaning out our garage and um, one of the dog, where the dogs sleep, I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna clean around it. And I went to pull up their little kind of little dog pillow thing. And there was a centipede, it felt like it was that big. Whoa, yeah. that's it enormous. Was, it was like the size of my finger. And it was like, it was, Alana like, uh, Alana was right next to me, Alana was like, it was so funny how much she was like screaming <laughs> and My. it got away it, it crawled up into some little crevice and just it was so fast once it like woke up and realized we were trying to get it just <laughs> <laughs> And it's just somewhere in our house. It's like a big... Oh, my gosh. Yeah. She, oh my God. She's had nightmares over it. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's, I feel like it's going to come back and try and kill me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my um my teacher in sixth grade had this little resin resin little circle paperweight thing and it had a centipede in it and the centipede's like literally this big. It's, like he enormous, yeah. like huge. And like it's curled up in a ball and everything and I was like, Was that alive when you got it? Oh like, my goodness. And she said, No, it was in my it was in a pool just lying there dead in a pool <laughs> I would have been fell like, into a pool yeah I would have not gone near the thing I would have still they're been like so, is that thing dead or not they're so scary because I yeah we're not really exposed to them over in Australia so coming over here it's like they're everywhere and the other day when I was cleaning out the, the garage I mean that was the biggest one I've ever, and I was blown away it looked evil it looked like it was like smirking at me as it was running away yeah <laughs> It was, yeah, they look like they've crawled out of hell, those things. Australia doesn't have a lot of, like, um, centipedes, but they do have a lot of spiders. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, we do. I think a, a, another animal or pest that, is, that goes under the radar is a, a ticks. Um, they carry so many diseases. Um, and have those here, over there. Yeah, do they have them here too? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, they've got... So they carry, like, Lyme's disease and stuff, which is real dangerous. Um, I actually had a, an, an, one of our animals died from a, a tick bite, uh, which was real sad, but... Uh, yeah, man, I think those, those are horrible. So we got spiders, we got snakes. I can't even... <laughs> what else have we got? And you name it, we've got it. We've got freaking octopuses, bleeding <laughs> octopus, we got... Blue bottles, we got, what, what is it, um, we, we got everything, man. <laughs> everything you can basically, everything besides centipedes, thank God. <laughs> oh, you guys have all the exotic stuff. And we have the exotic stuff, yeah. yeah. And then, <laughs> but you guys don't have centipedes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before we end this, do you yeah. have any shout outs you want to give anybody? Um, man, just to you, you're doing an awesome job. And well, thanks thank for you. thanks for getting me on here. Yeah, no problem. It's a pleasure to have you on. Uh, thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Well, we want to say a big mahalos to Uncle Jack for his time, and we also want to wish your whole family good health. Thank you, man. You too. Happiness and success, and we look forward to watching your family grow up on Kauai, and hope you, uh, or hope we can meet your mom <laughs> someday. I uh, appreciate it, man. Yeah. Mahalo to everyone watching the Outer Island Podcast, brought to you by Tomba Surf Co. Kauai. We'd greatly appreciate it if you like this video or if you like some of our previous ones, if you please like and subscribe. 
And we'd also appreciate it if you follow Tomba on Instagram at TombaSurf, myself at j.wood, that's J-A-E dot W-O-O-D, and Jack Freestone at Jack Freestone, right? Thank you, man. Yep, you yeah. nailed it. Um, another reminder that the Tomba shop is open, and if you're not on island, we have an online option for you. Shoots. Yeah. This is my home, oh, my heart belongs to it, can't let it go, oh Just a bit of Ohana, watch you fall in love like You can visit, I'll send you home on the next flight Cause this belongs to us, you'll never know, oh It's because of Kauai, I'm about to blow, oh Home says the house lights I know Cruising, can't leave the stars, it's so cold Feel the sun and it's burning through my ride Tint the windows on my eyes, I'm gon' lie I'm on the right while I'm backside the left Pulling it deep inside to catch my last breath Like I'll be gone but I'm there to let you know That I will never leave cause this is my home Just a little bit of time to baby And the world keeps growing stronger No, you'll never replace this island Kauai is where I belong, yeah Just a little bit of time to baby Got you surfing much longer, baby once you leave, you know you'll always come back Kawhi is where we are from Whoa, oh 